Okay, well our chapter today, uh, the title of our chapter today is, what is it? Uh, tuning in to God's voice, right? Huh, to his everyday voice? Okay. Uh, let me start with something I read this week that I think is, is a good thing, good for us, because uh, I, I think this stuff all fits, and it, it, this, for me it works, it help, helps. Um, who is this about? You know what I got to start doing is start recording who this, who writes this stuff. So I can it, I forget. But the, the, the title of this is Prayer for Understanding His Condescending Love. And here's where it starts. In various scriptures, it says God treated, treated Abraham and Moses each as a friend and talked with them as a friend would. Jesus called his disciples friends. When God treats us as friends, he also acts as our friend, and he will reveal his plan to us as our friend. It's not because we're worthy, but it's be, it is because of his condescending love. God condescended uh, himself that we can draw ourselves closer to him. Abraham knows it. He respected God's majesty. Abraham admits that he is nothing but dust and ashes as he stands before the Lord. Prayers and humility increase our appreciation of God. And here's a prayer that was at the end of this. Father Lord, I thank you for calling us as your children and friends. It is not because we are worthy, but because you love us so much and lower yourself to draw us close to you. Father Lord, help us to humble ourselves so that we will know how wide and how high your love is in Jesus' name, Amen. Okay, and I'll, I'll, I'll start. I'll start recording who writes these things and where to find them. So if you want to go back and and look at some of these, just kind of to kind of review where we are. Uh, we started out started this session by saying that the prayer is interaction between is an interaction between you and God, and it starts with the relationship, the relationship that we have with God. It's a dynamic prayer that is a dynamic conversation between two individuals, one of being God, and one of God, and, and the other us, who love, care for, and enjoy one another. Uh, then we talked about the fact that, the, the, that we can define the relationship between God and man because, uh, uh, be, because one, we, we humans are uniquely created in the image of God. God created us, he says, in the scriptures, he created us in his image. Uh, so he, he, created, he, cre he created everything else, and then when he created man, he said it was good. Right? We, so he was created in his image, which means that we should be able to have a personal, a relationship with him. Uh, our identity, our identity is rooted in God, just like our, as human beings, our identity is rooted in our parents. So that's, a, that's, that's again why we can have, or should have, a, a close relationship uh, between us and God. Not only are we uh, uh, uniquely created, each one of us is special. Now, each, one is, each one of us is unique, and each one of us is special because God actually created each one of us for a unique purpose. Nobody else can do what it is that, for God that he wants us to do, he wants you to do. Nobody else can do that. And we don't do it all the time, right? But, but whatever it is God created us for and our purpose, nobody else can do that. So again, that's, that'll help us understand this relationship that we have with God. He's created us to do something special for him because we are, we are in his image and uh, he calls us his friend. Um, uh, now, we've talked about this too. Friendship is just one of the ways that God relates to us. You know, he's, 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 he's father, he's shepherd, he's redeemer, he's teacher. But the way that we talk to him, can talk to him, especially on an intimate basis, is as a friend. And as a friend, we've talked about as a friend, we can be open with God. We don't have to hide our emotions, or shouldn't hide our emotions, or shouldn't fake it, like that. You know, because we don't have to be perfect in order to talk to God. 
Uh, he's already he's already he's already declared us being righteous, right? Through through Jesus, right? So we are if we're already righteous, we don't have to be afraid of opening up our emotions to God, How, whatever we're feeling. You know, if, we, if we're sad or we're angry or we're disappointed, it's okay for us to talk to God about that, even if our anger or disappointment is with God, because we determine we, we want something done and we want it done at a certain time and we want it done a certain way and we're disappointed that it doesn't happen, so we're frustrated it's okay for us to say that to God. It's okay for us to, to indicate that to God. One, he can take it, right? He can take it. <laughs> we can't take sometimes when people jump on us, but God can take it. And then, well, then what we need to do is like we do with a friend, if it's a good friend, is to sit back and wait and let God respond. And he will respond uh, uh, because as we talked about last week, God does talk to us, and we're going to talk a little bit. Try to talk a little bit more about that today. Is how we can how we can discern discern uh, God's voice. Um, we talked about I think it was last week. Last week we talked about or week before we talked about we have we have head beliefs and heart beliefs. A head belief is something we read in Scripture, like God is love, right? But a heart belief is how we respond or react to certain situations. We know God loves us. We know that he'll meet all of our needs according to his vision and glory of Christ Jesus. We know all of that. And we've read that and we do believe it. But then when something happens, a tragedy or a catastrophe or something happens with a loved one, our initial response is not necessarily what we believe. Okay, does that make sense? And what we what we what we end up what we what we what what we got to get ourselves to we've got to make our head belief and our heart belief match. So when something happens, we react just like we already know that God is love. When something happens, we need to react like that. It's not automatic. We have to work on it. We have to continue to work on it. Continue to work. Continue to work on it. Uh, because that's something we you know we know some stuff about God. We know He loves us. We know He, he you know we know that He's concerned about the the, the, the the very smallest the smallest thing that ever happens to us. We know He wants to help us out of all our messes. We know we know that He uh, he, he wants to hear from us. He likes to hear from us. We know all of that. So we need to start responding that way when stuff happens. We need to our head and heart beliefs need to work. And last week we talked about, we started talking about the fact that God does want to engage us in two-way communication. We talk, you know, can we pray? And then God, God talks. He, that's what he wants. He wants to engage us in two-way communication. So the question is, how do one uh, to recognize how God speaks to us and he doesn't speak to us in all of us in the same way necessarily. And then how we can make sure that it's God speaking and not somebody else. It doesn't look like anybody's going to call in, so I'm going to hang up. Thank you, but we'll do it. So we're going to do this every week. Thank you, thank you. Um, uh, we've got to, we've got to, God speaks to us in different ways. I've, 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 I've talked about this before. You know, he's, and I, I don't know why I keep saying this, but I hope he does it again. It's God, God has spoken to me audibly only one time, one time only. And I'm hoping, and I keep asking that he do it again. It hasn't happened, and it may not, but but he speaks to us in a lot of different ways. What were some of the ways we talked about? We talked about how does God speak to us? Well, I wasn't here, but um, I, I think sometimes God speaks to us through other people. Yes. And through songs. Yes. Um, through uh, even sometimes through little uh, symbolic messages like uh, an animal, a certain animal, or, uh, like hummingbirds for me. Okay. If I see a hummingbird, it is right near me. It's very rare, so I know. There's something going on, right? <laughs> okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I've heard people talk about butterflies like that. 
uh, uh, you mentioned one, you know, circumstances, God can speak to us through circumstances, uh, through other people, right? And he actually can speak to us through prayer. You know, while, when we're praying, it, we, we, you, you know, you've heard the still, small voice thing. Uh, it's if you feel something in your spirit, like God, you don't hear a voice necessarily, but some, there's something in your spirit that you believe God is, is uh, uh, talking to us. Um, so, um, um, if we're going to relate in a two-way relationship, two-way conversation, we, we, got, we need to become aware, we've talked about some of those, of the different ways God speaks, and we need to learn to discern His voice. I think I mentioned last week, one of the things that I'm always afraid of is, is whether this voice I've heard, wherever it's coming from, is it from God or is it from the enemy or whose voice is it? So we need to learn how to discern his voice if we can. And one of the things that's interesting, and she talks a little bit about this in his book, and it's interesting because I can relate. Uh, uh, you have friends that communicate certain ways, right? Uh, I have a friend, for example, I have a friend that if I want to contact her, I want to hear from her, right? She's got a cell phone, she has a landline, she has email, okay? She doesn't respond to any of those, <laughs> right? So if I, want to, if I want a response from her, and she doesn't do text either, so if I want a response from her, I have to send it to her on Facebook Messenger. That's how she responds. <laughs> To me, right? If I want an answer, if you know, call me or hey, such and such. What about this? If I want to, if I want to hear from her, that's the way I've got to to respond. So I know that that's the way she communicates. So I have to be willing to communicate with her that way. I have other friends that are different. I have friends that I have some friends that only communicate. So with social media, you got to figure really figure stuff out. I got I have some friends who only communicate through Instagram direct message. Uh, I, 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 I have some friends who only communicate through text. If I want to talk, I don't call them on the phone. They, they only respond to text. So if I know that, and I know that's how, how they communicate, that's how I've got to communicate with it. Same thing with us, with God. We got. We need to know how God communicates. Now God, here's all of this stuff. But we need to know how God communicates with us. Because we're all, we're all different. And he doesn't communicate with all of us the same way. Uh, kind of, it comes with this exercise that's in the book. There's this, uh, there's this list of, uh, where is it? There's this list of, I think it's social media stuff. There's this list of, uh, yeah, it's on page, 68 of the book. Yeah, there's, there's this list of stuff here, and what you ask is, you know, do, uh, check any of that that use one, or check check any that you use, but but one or more of your friends don't use. Okay. So, and and I, I can in all these instances, I use most of these, but there are some I don't use. If somebody wants to contact me, don't don't uh, don't. Don't expect me to engage in a in a long face to face conversation. I, it, you know, I mean, I like being around people, but don't expect me to be a long face to face conversation or a, or a long telephone conversation. And I have friends that like to talk a long time, right? But I don't. <laughs> so 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 uh, uh, a phone call. I don't do handwritten letters, birthday cards. And thank you notes. And, and I'm ashamed of that now. So okay, I don't do thank you notes, birthday cards, or handwritten. It's not that I don't love you, but, but, but I don't communicate in those ways. So uh, if we're friends, we need to know that about each other so that w when we communicate, uh, we'll know that it's from me or, or, or. Same thing with us and God. Um, 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 and I, I mean, from a young child, I didn't write. When I was a kid, when we didn't have social media, you know, when I went to college, my mother used to get on because I didn't write. So uh, uh, 
if she wanted to talk to me, she'd have to call. And since you know I was in a dorm, and if somebody answered the payphone, she would they'd hope somebody would give me give me the message. <laughs> but but she knew that about me, and she knew that in order to communicate, she could write, and then I would call. Her. So same the same thing with with us and God. We need to know how to. So how how we communicate is m is very important. Uh, and it's the same thing between us and God. If we want to do, if we want to communicate with God, we got to do our part, right? Our part, and also our part in communicating with God. Our part is prayer. We got to talk. We have to talk to God uh, in, in prayer. Uh, then we have to be aware of how the different ways He speaks to us, and we've got to learn actually to discern His voice because. You'll get a lot. We get a lot of different voices, and we need to learn what he, what hears us. So, what are some of the methods of God communicating? We talked about some of them. Uh, uh, we we got some of those. That, and there's a, there's there's and so there's, there's, there's there's some information in, in it that she has in the book that I think we should look at. Uh, she says that in order to learn how God communicates, we need to look at the Bible. That's how we know. About that's how we know about God, and we need to start looking in the Bible. Uh, that she said there's a lot of scripture that says God communicated, but it doesn't really tell us the method that He used. Uh, an example you, you, she gave us in Luke 2:26. Somebody wants to go there. Luke 2:26. I got to want to read it real quick. And it, and it has been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he would not see death before he had seen the Lord, uh, the Lord Christ. Right. Now it says he revealed to him by the Holy Spirit, but but it doesn't say how the Holy Spirit <coughs> revealed to him. So Simeon had to know, had to somehow be able to discern the fact that that was from God and the Holy Spirit. We need and we need to. We need to practice and work on so that we would begin to know whether it's God. We can discern God's voice. Uh, then the, the other places where it says God that said or the word of the Lord come, that's clear in Scripture. You know, the word of the Lord came, um, 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 or the, uh, here, let's look at some. If we look at, if we look at, uh, Matthew, that's a long one. Look, Matthew 17, 1 through 8. And then we look at it and we'll see how, how, how did God, how did God communicate? Matthew 17, yeah. verses 1 through 8. Six days later, Jesus took Peter and the two brothers, James and John, and led them up a high mountain to be alone. As the men watched, Jesus' Jesus's appearance was transformed so that his face shone like the sun, and his clothes became as white as light. Suddenly Moses and Elijah appeared and began talking with Jesus. Peter exclaimed, Lord, it's wonderful for us to be here. If you want, I'll make three shelters as memorials, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. But even as he spoke, a bright cloud overshadowed them. And a voice from the cloud said, This is my dearly loved son who brings me great joy. Listen to him. The disciples were terrified and fell face down on the ground. Then Jesus came over and touched them. Get up, he said. Don't be afraid. And when they looked up, Moses and Elijah were gone, and they saw only Jesus. Okay, so how, so how did he speak then? That time? How did God speak? Audibly, right? Okay. Here's another one. Uh, that uh, we we all know that's Luke three twenty one and twenty two. Now, when all the people were baptized, and when Jesus also had been baptized and was praying, the heavens were opened, and the Holy Spirit descended on him in bodily form, like a dove, and a voice came from heaven: "You are my beloved Son; with you I am well pleased." Okay, now that one's easy. That he spoke by audible, audibly then, right? Yeah. Okay. Uh, let's try. 
Uh, let's try. Uh, second Chron, Second Chronicles thirty six twenty two. Cyrus and put this proclamation in writing and to send it throughout his kingdom. Okay, uh, then another one that's like that, Ezra 1 5. Then God stirred the hearts of the priests and Levites and the leaders of the tribes of Judah and Benjamin to go to Jerusalem to rebuild the temple of the Lord. Okay, so how did he speak then? Somehow stirred, stirred their hearts, stirred their hearts and the spirits to move, right? Have, you, have that ever happened to you? Okay, right? I mean, you don't know what it is. It's just say <laughs> something, and you and you did it, and, and, and it turns out something that God would have you do, right? Okay. So he speaks. That's the way he speaks. Speaks like that. Uh, Joel two twenty eight. Everybody got it? Let me read it. Yeah. Go ahead. You have it, John? Go ahead. Yeah. I have it. And it shall come to pass afterward, and I will pour out my spirit on all flesh. Your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Shall prophesy. Your old men shall dream dreams, and your young men shall see visions. Okay, so now that was easy, right? So what? Dreams and visions. Has God ever spoken to any of you like that? Has he? That's great. Okay, okay. Not, not to me. I've never. He's never spoken to me in a dream or a vision. Okay. All right. How? Okay. Let, let's try. Uh, but this is similar. Uh, let's go to the, the Acts ten nine through sixteen. On the morrow, as they went on their journey and drew nigh unto the city, Peter went up, up, up upon the housetop to pray about the sixth hour. And he became very hungry and would have eaten. But while they made ready, he fell into a trance and saw heaven open and a certain vessel descending unto, unto him, as it had been a great sheet knit at the four corners and let down to the earth wherein were all were all manner of four footed beasts of the earth and wild beasts and creeping things and fowls of the air. And there came a voice to him, <coughs> Rise, Peter, kill and eat. But Peter said, No so, Lord, not so, Lord, for I have never eaten anything that is common or unclean. And the voice spake unto him again the second time, What God hath cleansed that call, call not thou common. This was done thrice, and the vessel was received up, up into heaven. Okay. Up again into heaven. Okay, what about that time? What's that? How did he speak? Trans. Right, right, right. Yeah, with voice, right, with vision and voice, right? So he so combined, combined. So he, this must have been really important, right? <laughs> okay, okay. Uh, here's another one. I don't want to read the long one. Uh, let's, let's do the Acts. Uh, 8.26. Now an angel of the Lord said to Philip, Go south to the road, the desert road, that goes down from Jerusalem to Gaza. Okay, so how did he speak that time? 
Huh? That's a, the angel. Do an angel, right? Do an angel. It, has that ever happened to anybody in here? Only a dream. Huh? A dream. A dream? Okay. Okay. All right. Okay. Uh, and here's another that kind of that kind of goes along. I, I think fits fits your uh, uh, comment about the hummingbird. Uh, uh, let's go go to uh, Psalm Psalm nineteen one two four. <coughs> Psalm 19, 1 through 4. Their voice goes out through all the earth, and in their words to the end of the world. In them he has set the tent for the sun. Yeah. Mm -hmm. right. Okay, right. that's all right. Okay, so, so this time we're actually speaking through the creation itself, right? And then the, then there's the scripture in Romans, Romans 1, 20 and 21, where Paul writes about the, the creation itself. Uh, being proof that there's a God. Proof that God exists. Mm -hmm. Romans 1, 20 and 21. For the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead, so that they are without excuse. Because that, when they knew God, they glorified him. Not as God, neither were thankful, but because vain in their imaginations and their foolish heart was dark. Okay. Did you say Romans 1, 21? Rom Romans 1, 20 and 21. Oh, 20 and 20. Uh, 20. That wasn't in here though, right? Huh? No, oh. that's not in the book. <laughs> right, 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 right. That was the one I came up with. <laughs> uh, no worries, I just wanted to make sure. Yeah, no, no that, was, that, was, that one was, was for me. <laughs> Uh, uh, how about uh, this would be another way God speaks. How would how about uh, the num numbers eleven twenty five and twenty six? cloud and spoke to Moses. Then he gave the seventy elders the same spirit that was upon Moses. And when the spirit rested upon them, they prophesied. But this never happened again. Okay. Uh, and then uh, there's uh, Acts 19.6. Placed his hands on them, the Holy Spirit came on them, and they spoke in tongues and prophesied. Okay, so how did how did God speak in that instance? Through someone. Through somebody else, right? But through another person, mm -hmm. right? Because so they they spoke hit a prophecy or prophesied the word of God, right? Okay. Uh, well, most of the, uh, Psalms. Uh, no, this is Second Second Timothy three sixteen and seventeen. Scripture is God's breath and is useful for teaching, rebuking, correcting, and training in righteousness, so that the man of God may be thoroughly equipped for every good work. Okay, so how does he speak there, then? Through, through the Bible, right? Mm -hmm. so that's pretty clear. Okay, uh, look, look at Romans 8, 16. And let's see, what do you think about that? How God is God speaking? Romans, Romans 8, 16. The Spirit Himself testifies with our spirit that we are me, we are God's children. Okay, so how does how does He speak then? Then, how would He speak to us then? Spirit, spirit agreeing with our spirit. Remember, we talked about the still small voice thing. Maybe that that's kind of I think what 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 that is. God would speak to us that way. Okay, 
it's not audible, it's not in the scripture, it's not, not, by, not by the word, it's not by somebody prophesying, it's not by the creation, but you just sense God speaking to you, whether it's answering a prayer or, or, or uh, asking you to go witness or whatever it is, but it's, it's, it's in your spirit, it's something you sense, right? Okay, uh, and then here's an interesting one. Yes. Huh? How about the, the, the Amos scripture? Yes. 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 Okay. All right. Okay. Okay. Huh? Huh? Yes. Okay. Let's read, read it. Let's read it. That's kind of long. But uh, I'll tell you what, what I think. <laughs> Amos 4. Right. I brought, I brought hunger to every city and famine to every town. But still you would not return to me, says the Lord. I kept the rain from falling when your crops needed it the most. I sent rain on one town, but withheld it from another. Rain fell on one field, while another field withered away. People staggered from town to town looking for water, but there was never enough. But still you would not return to me, says the Lord. I struck your farms and vineyards with blight and mildew. Locusts devoured all your fig and olive trees. But still you would not return to me, says the Lord. I sent plagues on you like the plagues I sent to Egypt long ago. I killed your young men in war and led away, led all your horses away. The stench of death filled the air, but still you would not return to me, says the Lord. I destroyed some of your cities as I destroyed <coughs> Sodom and Gomorrah. Those of you who survived were like charred sticks pulled from a fire, but still you would not return to me, says the Lord. Therefore, I will bring upon you all the disasters I have announced. Prepare to meet your God in judgment, you people of Israel. For the Lord is the one who shapes the mountains, stirs up the winds, and reveals his thoughts to mankind. He turns the light of dawn into darkness and treads on the heights of the earth. The Lord God of heaven's armies is his name. Okay. Anybody thought, any thoughts? Oh, I will not rain up. Okay. <laughs> what? It's obvious God is trying to get their attention. Right? Okay. So, how about him speaking to us through some kind of discipline? He's, he's, oh, right? Okay. Like, okay. Uh, when, when, when you're a child, sometimes, sometimes in order to get the message across, you're grounded or something through discipline? That's my thought. What do you think? How does that... What do you think? After reading that now, thinking about it, I, my thought is that God was speaking to the nation through him disciplining them. I, I think that sometimes when people are so um, against the will of God, mm -hmm. that sometimes God has to take drastic measures and get our attention through punishing okay. through what seems as punishment. Right, right. And it's all an effort to turn us back to him. Right, and, and it, it, that's what it, that's what this looks like, right? Yeah. Trying to get trying to get their attention, and you know, because uh, nothing else is working apparently, <laughs> right? Right. And so he's speaking to them through discipline or punishment. Right. Does that make sense? Does it now after reading it? Or you got some other idea? How do we know if? It's the Lord, like if the tribulation that we're going through is the Lord trying to refine us or discipline us mm -hmm. as opposed to the enemy coming against us. Okay. That may be hard to determine. Um, um, two things. One, one, one is that Tribulation, I believe, and I, 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 and I think I, I think I just read the scripture. Trouble and tribulation does not come from God. Even though it read, this is kind of the way this would read, if we if we if we if we were able to look at the, the original script and, and do it in context, we'll find that 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 it didn't come from God, right? However. God will, will allow us to go through some things to refine, to refine us. 
Now, what, now the, the answer to whether it came from, well, first of all, we know it didn't come from God, okay? So there's only other two, there's a three other places it can come from. It can come from the enemy, it can come from another person, or it can come from us. So if you can eliminate you, and you can eliminate another person, then that leaves the enemy. Does that answer that question? Because it's hard, it's hard because what, what we have been taught, what we have been taught is that when something bad happens, we've been taught that it's punishment yeah. from God. Yeah. Okay? And I think I said this in, 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 a, in a session a couple of weeks ago, is that I don't believe that God punishes, but punishment is at judgment. Right? Now, and we since we know, okay, as Christians, that 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 our that, that we've already been judged in terms of life, eternal life, right? Then we then there's no punishment for us. That's like eternal punishment. Right, right, right. right. So so I, I say that there's no punishment for us, but there is discipline. So I try to, to make a difference between discipline and punishment. As a, okay. then, then I have a question about that then. Okay. So, I mean, just to make, so remember um, both, um, when uh, Miriam and Aaron um, spoke out about Moses, yes. God punished Miriam by giving her leprosy. So that was a discipline or was that a punishment? You know what I'm saying? I, there, I do. I do. I, I, do. I, I believe that's discipline. You did discipline? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Unless she wouldn't do it again. R right. D discipline is to instruct Punishment is to is judgment. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So if we can if we can make that distinction, uh, then uh, uh, now I think we can can, can, can figure out the truth. Because the scripture tells us God God doesn't do bad, bad right? <laughs> okay, He doesn't do bad, but He'll allow bad to happen to you. Like with Job, God didn't do any of that. Job said he did, I thought he did, right? And his friends thought he did. But he didn't do any of that, but he allowed Satan to do it to Job. And I believe that's the way, that's the way it is. Uh, but you, you got to determine whether it's from the enemy or from you or a friend, because that, that, that determines how you're going to fight it, how you're going to deal with it. If it's from the enemy, you did it one way, and if it's from you, you just got to make a change. Also, for somebody else, you can you can can maybe work it out with them. Okay, does that make does that make sense? Does any other question? We, but that that's what I saw. That that's what I saw. That pa passage as being God speaking th through discipline. Okay, I have another question. Yeah? Okay. So what about like all the stories, like in the New or the Old Testament, like when David fought all the battle and God killed all the people, like all his enemies? Yeah. Is that a punishment or is that? A you know what I mean? It's like a little bit. Yeah, yeah I, I. You know what I mean? Like he yeah. struck them dead because they and, and I, 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 and yeah, <laughs> I'm, I'm still trying to. I'm still trying to figure those out, right? Um, because it, and, and the reason I'm still trying to figure it out is because because I, I I know God doesn't do bad now right. now now, but God God also judges right now. This is all before Christ, of course. God judges. And the scripture tells us that he gave these people all, a lot of time, mm -hmm. <laughs> right, before taking them out, right? But he took them out so, but, uh, in order in, in so that they wouldn't contaminate his people. Right, or like Aaron's, Aaron's like two sons, like when they sinned against the, sin, or the, the camp or the, the, the tabernacle, God right. striked his two sons. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he did. That, right, right. Because they did because because they right. diso this because they disobeyed, right? They disobeyed. Well, God did do that, right? According to scripture, yes. According yeah. to scripture, he did it. Is that a discipline? I believe it's that, that, I, I, yes. I believe it's discipline, discipline rather than right, rather than rather than. But punish. I think I mean I have to find it, but I think God does punish. But punishment, you said, comes in the end. Right. Right. Not now. Right. I, right. But punishment doesn't happen. The 
punishment and discipline are two different things, right? Okay. Uh, 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 punishment. Punishment exacts pain and is a is a judgment. I believe. Okay. Discipline instru- punishment doesn't inst- instruct. So so in my in my view, my definition of of, of it. Some of the stuff that we believe is punishment, I believe, is discipline. And some of the stuff we do, we can re re so and re back to ourselves when we might have done it. That's right. us, right, that's, right. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's that's us. That's, okay. that's us. So uh, uh, some of the things, my view, again, this is my view, <laughs> is that is that some of the things we call punishment are actually discipline because they taught or to instruct. Uh, if I spank my child, right, we might call it punishment, but if I do it, it's the manner in which I do it, right? If I do it to instruct them to not do something, uh, that's one, if, if I do do it in anger to hurt them so that they won't do it, then that's punishment. Does that make sense? Yes. In the Bible, um, especially recently, I started to really believe that uh, the Old Testament is more of an example, like extreme examples, because it was before Christ, and it was before we were saved through Christ's blood. And I've always taken that some of the stories in the Old Testament they were so extreme, like where God would kill all these, God would allow these all these people to die. Or, but that was before Christ, and I feel like now um, our ideas of punishment and um, and uh, uh, discipline have to be refined and in, in, in aligned with after Christ, after being saved in Christ, New Testament, in aligned with New Testament. Um, so I I started to see. The difference between punishment and discipline. Okay. From that now. Okay. 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 That's that's good, and that's that's good. And you're right. You're right. The Old Testament is is a shadow of of what the New Testament. Because if if we if we read if we read the Old Testament as it's it's as a a shadow of the New Testament will see. If you look, for example, if you look at the stuff in the tabernacle, for example, um, and you look at the sacrifices, those are things that foreshadow Christ, right? So, so if we if we if we look at if we look and if we look at the examples of, 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 of uh, what we say punishment and all the time, if we look at those kinds of things in light of Christ, then we can see how they how they work. It's difficult, though, for us to, to answer questions like, right? Why did God tell the Israelites to go in and kill everybody, women and children and all the animals, right? You know, what kind of God is it? So it's it's hard to it's hard that's hard to to explain unless you look at the whole picture. Right, you gotta look at the whole story. You can't. We can't take bits and pieces, because if we did that, there are that's some stuff in the Old Testament that's some really bad stuff, right? And so if you take that and don't view it in terms of Christ, uh, that's a that's difficult for us to, to deal with. That's why it's important. Salvation is important because Scripture tells us you can't you, it, 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 you can't discern spiritual things if you're not spiritual. So you can't. Understand it, and you can't you can't explain it. So to somebody who's who's not saved, they will not understand it because it doesn't make sense a, apart from salvation and apart from the Holy Spirit and enlightenment. Okay, that that's not the final answer. We need to continue to we need to continue to look at this, but but uh, but but. Uh, uh, uh. Okay, let's move on. Let somebody else ask some questions. I think I'm done. 
I'm, I'm, I'm out of other at some point. <laughs> we'll come in today. I may have some more, but, but unless somebody else has some. But the stuff you're saying is really good. It's really good. And the, good, the, the thought process is good. But so you, do you agree with me that this is a discipline in this instance on Amos? Yes. Okay, 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 okay. That, 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 but, and, and that God, can, God does speak. I guess that's an important thing. God speaks sometimes through discipline or punishment. Whatever, use, use whatever term you want. God speaks this way sometimes in order to get our attention. And that may be how he needs to get our attention. If, if, if the word doesn't work or the or, Still small voice doesn't work, or the, the, the circumstances don't work, we don't hear, then maybe that's the way God needs to speak to us. Uh, so, is there anybody here who God has not spoken to? That's not a bad thing, so so if, if, if I mean, if it is, say something. Anybody? Okay, good. That's good. Okay. Anybody anybody here that God hasn't spoken to? That you, or you all of you put it this way. Is there anybody who, who doesn't think God has, <laughs> that God has not spoken to? Okay. Really? For real? Okay. 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 <laughs> All right. Okay. Now, the, the, uh, there are some barriers to us hearing from God. And she lists some. Uh, and we need to identify them. Because if, if cause remember last, last week, I think we said this last week, the, uh, uh, her friend asked her, friend asked her how, how often does God talk to her? And she said maybe 25% of the time. And he said, isn't that that's very sad, though, wouldn't you like for God to talk to you all the time? Right? And so if he doesn't talk, to, if we don't hear from him all the time, maybe there's, and, and, and if we believe that he wants to talk to us all the time, if we don't hear from him all the time, that's, that makes some reasons, right? some hindrances that for, for, for us not talking. And she lists them. Uh, and we actually need to identify them. One is not taking time to listen. Okay. That's, I'm guilty of, of that. Uh, one is doubting that he will really speak. That's a hindrance. Another is unconfessed sin. Because un- sin messes up, you know, puts static in the lines. <laughs> right, right. Uh, so unconfessed sin will sometimes cause us not to hear from God. Uh, distractions cause us not to hear from God. Um, uh, have you ever prayed? Which that's how you want to pray, okay? And all, all these distractions, phone rings or... Uh, you're thinking about stuff you need to do and all this things. Some, those are distractions, and so sometimes that hinders us from here for God. So we got to somehow eliminate the distractions. And that takes practice. That takes practice to do. You know, uh, uh, and some things that mean when you turn off the phone uh, or whatever. But distractions, because self reliance or independence can hinder God speaking with us. Make sense? Sometimes you figure you I can work this out <laughs> myself, right? So we don't hear we don't hear God. Uh, here's one: fear of what He might say. You ever thought? You ever had some of those? No, I haven't. Really? No. Okay. No. No. Okay. Uh, I have. Okay. <laughs> right. 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 <coughs> I prayed for something, and then I thought, well, what if this is what, what, and I'm afraid. What if he wants me to do that? What if he wants me to do that? And you all pray, God, send me wherever, whatever, do whatever. And then you think, well, what if he might say, I want you to do this? And it's frightening. So, yeah, yep. And so if that happens, you shut off that conversation. Right? <laughs> right? Right? So, and that's, that's a hindrance. So, and I've done it. I had to admit it. I have done it. And so I'll, I'll, I'll say, well, what about, you know, well, maybe, and then so I'll end the prayer. Because <laughs> I don't want to hear it if he says it. Because one, I'm expect, I know he speaks, so I'm expecting him to speak, and I don't want to hear this one. Right? Because I'm, I'm, I'm afraid. 
Uh, and it, yeah, I had to get over that. That's something I have to get over. But so that's the, that, that is a hindrance. Uh, and the other is one that I have, and Kimberly mentioned it, is that being afraid of hearing the wrong voice. Mm-hmm. Being afraid of hearing the wrong voice. Uh, being really, af- and so uh, I don't listen as much as I, I should. And I have to, we have to learn, we have to learn how to hear the right. So how would, how would we know whether it's God and not us, our own thoughts, or thoughts from the end? How would we know? Okay. I, I've learned to distinguish God's voice because my voice um, and any other voice is very shaky, unstable, um, indecisive, and uh, weak. Okay. But when I hear God's voice, and it doesn't happen often, right. but when I hear it, it's really strong, okay. it's very certain, it's very matter-of-fact, and okay. it's almost almost uses no no more than a few words. Okay, okay, and okay. And it doesn't keep talking. <laughs> one, <laughs> right, right. One, okay, okay. One sentence and that's okay. it. Okay, okay. Because my voice and other voices is going on and on and on. Excellent. Okay, yeah. so you've learned, right, so that's something you've learned. Okay. Yeah. Anybody else? Can you determine? Always, or you can always be sure that it, that it if it hears the voice, it will never, ever, ever contradict Scripture. Okay, that way you know for sure that it's God. Because if, it's, if it contradicts Scripture, you can you'll know it's not from God. You can just know it's not from, not from God. So if it contradicts Scripture, uh, how how what's another way you think that you can know whether it's, whether it's that, that's the, the the one the one uh, that there's a there's, there's a there's a the one I, the one is it's scripture for me, and the other is it's pretty matter of fact. The other thing is that, that some th- stuff has come to me that I would have never thought of, and it didn't contradict scripture. So that's the first thing I looked about. I would never have thought of this, and, and stuff like that happened. I will go back and check <laughs> to make sure because it's something I, I, I would have never thought of, or I wasn't thinking about this thing at all and boom here it is uh those you need to check check out uh uh, uh it won't conflict with, it won't uh, conflict with scripture and the other thing is that god god will somehow confirm it it will somehow be confirmed another way it'll be confirmed something you read something somebody says something you see then you can be pretty certain that it was God speaking to you. You, de- you can determine, you, you can know that it was Him speaking. Now, all of this stuff takes time and practice. Um, and um, so, um, uh, like she suggested, I, I, I suggest, don't be discouraged if it doesn't happen. If you don't hear from God every day, you know, you don't get discouraged because it takes time for us to begin to look. You look for things so, so you say God speaks. Look for the ways we talk about some of the ways we talk about. He speaks. And he may speak in another way to you. All this stuff we talked about today is is, is God spoken to anybody in a way that we haven't talked about today. He might. You know, it might speak to you in a way that's not that we haven't even talked about, uh, and it, and as long as you can just know it's Him, you know, it doesn't conflict with Scripture. It it doesn't make you nervous or upset or scared. It doesn't and what you hear doesn't make you scared uh, or nervous or uneasy. It's probably god would confirm it <laughs> right, right, right. Get, let, let him now you don't confirm it let him confirm it because he can just do a sign let's just say mm-hmm. but that sign isn't exactly in that in the scripture that sign that he showed you but it's a sign from him mm-hmm. he, he that's confirming it right yeah because it, 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 it it's going to match up something it's going to match up with something that you have have if, if, it, if it doesn't if it doesn't conflict with scripture yes correct 
It doesn't have to be in something from scripture. But if it if it if it if, if it's something if it doesn't conflict with scripture, you can go with it. You know, God's not God's not gonna God, not God's not gonna and this is an extreme example. God's not gonna tell you to you know, because you need because you need something to eat. God not gonna not God's not gonna tell you to go hit this person in the head and get it because it said doesn't steal. That's an extreme example. But so but but so that but that conflicts with scripture. So as long as it doesn't conflict with scripture it's probably from God, but he's going he to look for confirmation somewhere else, too. So look for like, somewhere to come. Doesn't have to be from scripture. It could be from a close friend that you know is is is, 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 is a Christian that you know the Holy Spirit speaks to. Uh, it could be a circumstance, but you can find it. Um, because he will speak to us. You know, uh, uh, he wants he wa and he wants us to to, uh, uh, to be able to discern his voice. There's a script John six John ten twenty seven. My sheep listen to my voice. I know them, and they follow me. Right. Okay. And we listen to because we know his voice. So so we got we we. We, we, we need to learn to discern, know it's him, and then we can be confident when we hear the voice and move out and do what, um, uh, what we've heard. And remember, scripture, the final, scripture is a final arbiter of what you hear. You won't conflict with scripture. Or a, you can verify the scripture, you can, whether it's a specific thing or not. You can verify the fact that this is, this is, this is, this does not conflict with God's word. We need to do that. We have to be aware of that. So we got to learn to listen. And it doesn't happen overnight. I'm still learning. It doesn't happen overnight. But the point is, God does want to have two-way communication. He wants us to talk to him. He wants to talk to us. And uh, uh, it's incumbent upon us. To, well, we got to we, we got to we got to talk to him. That's all of us. But then we've got to know how he talks to us because he doesn't talk to us the same way all of the time because situations and circumstances are different, right? And he, you know, he, he may not be able, or the, the best way to talk to us may not be what he's talked, what he's done in the past. But we need to know it's him. Okay. Anything else today? This okay today? Any more? Okay. Next week is uh, I got to come up with another book next for us next because next week is it. Next week is our last. It's keeping company with God, and that's going to be an interesting.